Hi there, my name is Sam of Core Yoga and today through this yin yang practice we'll be focusing at creating space within the body, uh, stimulating stability and strength where our body needs it and encouraging repair in the muscles and the connective tissues within the body that feeds into a calming and a balancing of the nervous system to calm your mind. So stimulating the growth within the body by releasing tension, activating muscles and allowing the body to soften to facilitate repair. So we're going to start in a yin pose to begin with, we're going to start in a yin child's pose. So taking your knees mat distance apart and bringing your big toe joints to me. Allow the hips to soften as low as the hips want to go and reach your hands out so it's an extended child's pose as far as your body will allow. And allow the elbows and the forehead to rest down towards the earth or on a cushion or a blanket or whatever feels right. And just taking a few moments as we begin the practice to tune in firstly to the physical body and to notice how that body is feeling this morning, this evening, this afternoon. And allowing the mind to notice the tension, the tightness, the discomfort in the body. It's totally fine to notice that and actually that's a good thing. So that when we travel through the practice, we're more mindful of those spaces that have felt a little constricted already at the beginning of the practice. We don't overdo it through those spaces. And then take a moment to notice what feels good. So there's space in your body that might feel soft, might feel open, alive. Just tune in to what feels good. And with equal balance, hold that with you as you travel through the practice. Try to resist the urge to move or to fidget. So if you're feeling really uncomfortable, so just take this moment just to do that bit of moving, that bit of fidgeting. And if you feel okay, then come back, could stay here. So within a yin pose, we hold the pose for about three to five minutes. And during that time, we're allowing the muscles to lengthen, the myofascia around the muscle to catch up, to unstick. And we're applying a little bit of good stress to the connective tissues in the body to stimulate the hydration of these tissues to enable movement and mobility. That movement and mobility will allow us to put our bodies in a physical position that will allow us to activate the right muscles and build strength in the right spaces. And as we return to these types of poses at the end of the class, we'll use them to encourage the blood flow to these spaces to stimulate the mending, the fixing of the muscles, the moving of the connective tissue, to encourage the repair within the body. To allow us to get stronger, more mobile, as we continue with through our practice. To allow us to come a little more inward, just take a moment to notice the breath now. And notice 
notice as soon as we talk about breath, we start to deepen it. So allow that natural response and allow that breath to be deepened. And for now, keep the belly nice and soft. As you take that breath into the belly space, allow it to grow, to sink towards the floor. And as you exhale, use this as an opportunity to allow the whole body to feel heavy and downward. And then just use this opportunity to take a look at the content within the mind. To assess the nature, the speed of that content. To not judge of what the mind is thinking but to soften those thoughts. And so through the practice, we'll do that by focusing on our movements and our breath. Allowing that mind to calm, to still by the end of the practice, at least a little bit. So we're going to be here in this yin pose for about another 60 seconds. Maybe now or maybe in the minutes preceding this, the body might be starting to send messages to the brain. Messages of discomfort, desire to move. And just stay with it. And just tune in for the last 45 seconds from now on the breath. Allow the breath to come. And allow the breath to go. And watch the breath as it moves. In, around and out of the body. Do you breathe your next exhalation breath and feel the belly pull in towards the thighs? Just keep that sense of tension. Walk your fingers a little further forward. Lift the elbows off the floor and press the palms down. We're starting to activate this pose without moving too quickly. Feel the muscles at the base of the pelvis, the pelvic floor muscles. And as you exhale your next breath, just give them a subtle lift. This is Mula Bandha. This will help allow us to recruit those deeper postural muscles in the body to support that stability within the body. And as best you can, keeping Mula Bandha a little bit lifted through the practice. The belly drawing back towards the spine now creates Uddiyana Bandha, tummy lock, creating a sense of continuing that internal strength and support. And here in this child's pose, your chin is a little bit drawing towards your chest. Creating a little lock at the back of the throat, Jalandhara Bandha. And then through that little lock, through that little constriction, we breathe our Ujjayi breath. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. Using the breath to warm up the body, to 
fire up those muscles to provide a focus and a rhythm to the practice. Then inhale, press into the hands and the knees and take your time to come out. Walk your hands back towards your shoulders. Use your hands to draw your knees towards one another. They've been really open for a long period of time. And bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Maybe lift up the feet and give the feet a, a, a few circles. So now as we come through our preparation poses, we're going to really work at mobilizing. Um, predominantly through the hip space where we hold a lot of tension that builds up over years rather than days. So from here the hands underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips and the feet just resting on the floor. We're going to start with a few rounds of nice simple cat cow. As you inhale drop the belly towards the floor, open the chest, look up to the sky. And as you exhale, push the floor away from you, tuck your chin. Inhale, travel that belly down, squeeze and open through the chest. And exhale, push the floor away from you. Maybe do this with your eyes closed as you inhale, feeling the breath, exhale, and moving the body with the rhythm of that breath. Two more like this, you're inhaling, maybe you're tuning into some tightness, then you're exhaling, feeling those sensations within the body. Inhale, come back to a, all fours, and then tuck under the toes, exhale, lift the hips, downward facing dog. So in and out of this, inhale, bend the knees back to all fours. Keep the toes tucked under, exhale, sit the hips back towards the heels. And then inhale, back to all fours. And exhale, push up into downward facing dog. A little bit faster now, we inhale, drop the knees, sit the hips back. And then exhale, push the floor away from us. Inhale, come back to that variation of child's. And then exhale, push the floor, lift the hips down. Look. One more inhale, controlling the um, journey. Exhale, the transition as important as the pose. And then take a moment to bend your knees in this downward facing dog. Just notice how the body is feeling. And knowing that if you're practicing this in the morning, the body will feel different to how it feels in the afternoon. Once you've been moving and mobilizing in the day, the movement is already a little bit easier. From here, as you inhale, come back to all fours. Take your right leg out to the side, keep your left toes tucked under, and bring your right foot in line with your knee. So it's out as wide as it goes, you're starting to get a stretch in the inner thigh. And then as you inhale, you're simply going to sit your hips back towards your heel. And as you exhale, come back. So again, we're working into that variation of child's pose. But this time we've got our leg out to the side. We're inhaling to come back. And exhaling to come forward. Two more like this. As we inhale to come back, keep the outer edge of the right foot nicely grounded. Inhale to return. Then exhale, last one. And inhale to come up. Exhale, bring your right knee back underneath. And then from here, you're going to extend your arms out in front of you and come into a variation of puppy pose. The forehead or the chin towards the floor, take a couple of breaths into the wide, into the space between the armpits. And allowing some mobility, some lengthening into that shoulder space also. So we're focusing around the hips, but it doesn't mean that the upper body doesn't also need to move. And as we get into the practice, the the focus on both shoulders and hips becomes more balanced. 
come all the way back to the all fours. And then from there, I'm going to flip. You stay where you are. Take your left leg out to the side. And the left um, arch in line with the right knee. Keep the right toes tucked under. Inhale, sit back. And exhale, come forward. If you're working with a bunion in your foot, you might feel it much easier to bring a flat foot to the floor, particularly if you're getting discomfort as you bend into those feet. If you're just getting a bit of a sensation in the sole of your foot, that's good stuff. We're lengthening out the plantar fascia right now in the sole of the foot as we go back. We know the whole body is interconnected. Inhale, come back. And exhale, forward. So one more like this. Inhale, send it back. And exhale, forward. And then bringing your knees back to all fours. I'll just swivel around and find your way back into your downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, just take a moment, feel the floor, lift the hips towards the sky, release the tension in the back of the neck. And then inhale, travel the shoulders forward, come to a high plank. And exhale, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward, high plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more inhale to plank. Then one more exhale to dog. From dog, you're going to take your right knee forward to pigeon pose, but not your deepest variation. So right knee behind right ankle, a little bit left hand travels, a uh, left foot travels back. And bring the hands just nicely mat distance apart and just take a little sway here. So we're not in our deepest variation of pigeon. One of the yin poses at the end of the class is pigeon, and we'll spend plenty of time here. But for now, we're just using it to move and mobilize a little bit through those hips. Nice. And then from here, bring the hands back underneath the shoulders, release the back leg, tuck under the toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, travel forwards to high plank. So from high plank, we're going to go actually to upward facing dog. So you're going to roll onto the tops of the feet and drop the hips towards the floor, keeping the thighs off the floor. Now, not too long here, but a little sway from side to side. And then as you exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Left knee forward to pigeon, right leg back a little way. Take the hands mat distance apart. Once again, a little sway from side to side. Nice. So we're accessing some motion in the hip space. And that will work its way up and down the body. As we get into the main part of the yang practice we're going to be working the whole body facilitating that motion creating that stability and building that strength where we need it most come back to the center with your hands tuck under your back toe downward facing dog from here in your down dog walk your hands forward to the top of the mat and allow yourself a rag doll. So just grab your elbows and soften your knees. So remind yourself if you're practicing in the morning like I am, that your body's going to be a little stiffer than it is in the evening. Throughout the night, our fascia dries up. Our fascia gets a little tight. And it takes time to move that around the body. That's just what we're going to be doing through this practice. If you're moving from side to side, come to stillness now. And then from here, inhale, press your hands into your shins and halfway lift. Then exhale, fold forwards, let it go. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. And exhale, palms together in the heart space. So looking down at your feet and bringing your feet hip distance apart, 
or your big toe joints to meet, whatever feels better in your body. And feeling the sense that there's an element of evenness underneath the soles of your feet. Then bring the palms together in the heart space and close off the eyes. Feel the muscles at the base of your pelvis and give them a little lift, Mula Banda. Feel the muscles around the belly space. Hug the middle back, Udhyana Banda. Feel a sense of drawing the crown of the head up, the back of the skull back, to create a little dropping down of the chin, a constriction in the back of the throat, Jalandharavanda. Breathing wide into the rib cage, in through the nose and out through the nose. Hear that sound, that constriction at the back of the throat, just like the rolling of the ocean. Not so loud that the whole room could hear it, but so loud that the next person to you would be able to hear it. And then through sun salutations, inhale, open the eyes, look up to the sky. And exhale, slowly moving for the full length of the breath towards the floor. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, forward you fold. Inhale, reach your hands up and look up. And exhale, palms together through the heart space. One more like that. Inhale, reach up, lift up, look up. Exhale, allowing that constriction to stay at the back of the throat as you inhale to halfway lift. It's harder on the in-breath. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. And exhale, palms together in the heart space. You're in Amaskar A, but without Chaturanga and Up Dog. Inhale, reach your hands up towards the sky and look up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold forwards. Release the tension in the face. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, hands down. Just step back to downward facing dog. Take a moment, soften the knees in your down dog. Create a sense of length through the spine as you lift the head sit bones a little higher to the sky. Take a breath in and a breath out. Keep that sense of grounding down to the earth and lifting up to the sky. That lovely little light activation of Mula Bandha, Udhyana Bandha and Jalandhara Bandha. Creating that constriction at the back of the throat for your UJE. As you exhale, bend the knees, look to the hands, step the right and the left foot forward to fold. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, forward you fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. And exhale, palms together in the heart. Inhale, reach up, lift up, look up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. This time, exhale, step back to plank. Hold your plank for a moment. Push the floor away from you with your hands. Push back in the heels. Feel the fire in the front of the thighs and the back of the hips. And then as you exhale, knees, then thighs, then belly, down to the floor. Inhale, first off, baby cobra. Exhale, push the floor away from you. Downward facing dog. Take a moment, bend the knees a little more deeply. And then lift that sit bone to the sky. 
So when I come to my practice in the morning, if you are practicing in the morning, and I take the straight legs that I normally take in the afternoon, I start to round through my upper spine. And that's creating a poor posture in this pose for the shoulders, for the neck. And I'm relying on other spaces in the body to take the load. So in the morning, I need to bend my knees a whole heap more than I do in the afternoon to create that length in the spine. Notice what you notice in your body when you take these poses at different times of the day also. As you exhale, bend the knees, look to the thumb, step the left, then the right foot forward and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. And exhale, palms together in the heart. Inhale, into a lunge variation, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, soften the knees and fold it forward. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, right leg back, right knee to the floor. Inhale, reaching up, low lunge. Exhale, hands down, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, travel forwards, high plank. Exhale, knees, thighs and belly down to the floor. This time, half locust, feet stay on the floor. Inhale, raise your head and your chest. Exhale, hands down, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg to the sky. Exhale, step the right foot forward, left knee down. Inhale, reach up, low lunge. Exhale, hands down, left foot to join the right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach up, lift up, look up. Exhale, soften the knees as you fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, left foot back, left knee to the floor. Inhale, push the floor away from you, low lunge. Exhale, hands down, downward facing dog. Inhale, travel forward, tie plank. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Half locust, inhale, upper body only. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, set the left foot forward, drop the right knee. Inhale, reach up, lift up, look up. Exhale, hands down, step the right foot to join the left. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach up to the sky, look up. Then exhale, palms together in the heart space. Crescent lunge variation, inhale, reach up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, right leg back, right knee lifted. Inhale, squeeze that right butt cheek. Exhale, step back to plank. Inhale, in plank. Exhale, knees, thighs and belly. This time, full locus. Inhale, raise the feet as well. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg. Exhale, bend and open up scorpion dog. Inhale, right side of the body. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, squeeze the left butt cheek, high lunge. Exhale, hands down, left foot to join the right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your hands to the sky. Exhale, soften the knees and fold. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, left foot back, left knee lifted. Inhale, squeeze those glutes. Exhale, hands down, step back to plank. Inhale in plank. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Inhale, locust. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, scorpion, left dog. Inhale, here. Exhale, left foot steps forward. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, hands down, right foot steps forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, into Uttkatasana, bend the knees, reach the hands forward, make it nice and low. Feel the fire in the legs. Feel the activation of those bundles. Then breathe wide into the ribs. As you exhale, fold it forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step back to plank. From your plank, press your hands into the floor, the left foot down. Squeeze your right glute and lift your right foot. Take a breath in here. And then exhale, draw the right knee towards your chest. Inhale here. And then exhale, reach that right leg to three-legged dog. Exhale, next breath, right foot stays forward. Drop the back knee to the floor. Interlace your hands. Turn the palms to face out. And inhale, come into a low lunge. Press the floor away from you, squeeze your inner thighs. Feel the breath travel into the rib space. And the back of the hands, the palms of the hands reaching up towards the sky. Relax the back of the neck, take a breath in. Then exhale, bring your hands back to the floor. Tuck under your back toes, and inhale, reach up into a high lunge. From here, bring the elbows out in line with the shoulders. And as you inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together. As you exhale, take the left elbow on top of the right eagle arms. So inhale, open up, squeeze and open the shoulders. Exhale, tuck the chin, bring the um, left elbow on top. One more on this side, inhale, open, and exhale, elbow on top. Inhale, release the hands, reach the hands up to the sky, crescent lunge. Exhale, palms together through the heart space. Bring the hands behind you and interlace your fingers or grab a strap or a towel and draw those hands towards the back of the mat. Then from here, as you exhale, drop the left knee towards the floor. And then inhale, push that floor away from you, come back. Exhale, knee to floor. Inhale to return. Last one, exhale, knee down. Inhale, up. Exhale, release the hands. Set the right leg back, downward facing dog. Drop to the knees, send the hips back to the heels. Child's pose. Allow the elbows to come down to the floor. So creating motion and stability where we need it in our bodies. But also encouraging repair. So we just work one side of the body pretty hard. And now we're taking about five to ten breaths as a little respite in the middle before we come to the other side. We don't ever lose sight of that breath. We don't really let go of those bundles just yet. But we're giving the body an opportunity to take a momentary rest. To allow the muscles a moment of softness so that they can work just as hard once again. These thought 
processes, these systems, true and alive in strength and conditioning training. Press the hands into the floor and come all the way up, downward facing dog. Inhale, travel forward, high plank. Your choice, exhale, chaturanga or to the floor. Inhale to up dog or to cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, travel to that high plank, hold it here. Push the hands and the right foot down into the floor. Squeeze the left glute, lift the left foot. Take an in-breath here. As you exhale, draw that knee to chest. Take an in-breath here. As you exhale, reach that left leg to the sky. Inhale here. Exhale, left foot steps forward. Drop the right knee, release the right toes. Interlace those fingers and inhale, come up into your low lunge. So don't make the low lunge too deep. Keep that sense of pressing the feet down into the floor at the same time as you're lifting the palms towards the sky. Feeling that breath drawing into your ribcage. Feeling that sense of rhythm of breath a movement of breath, even though right now we're still in a pose. And then exhale, bring the hands back to the floor, tuck under the back toes, lift up the back heel. And then inhale, come into your crescent lunge, noticing that I've got a pretty deep bend in my knee today, because it's morning and as I said, I need to take time to open up my body. Bring elbows out to the side. Squeeze your right glute. Inhale, draw the elbows towards one another. Open the chest. Exhale, right elbow on top of left. Eagle arms. So inhale, open up. Look up. Exhale, elbow on top. Right on top of left. Then inhale. So we're getting into shoulders now as well. We started off with the big junction of the hips. And now we're working into upper body mobility and strengthening into the lower body. Inhale, high lunge, crescent lunge. Exhale, palms together in the heart space. Bring your hands behind you. Either grab your towel or take an interlace of your fingers. As you exhale, drop the knee to the floor. And as you inhale, open up. Exhale, right knee down. Inhale to lift. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale, hands down to the floor. Right foot steps forward and fold. This time our recovery or our uh, respite pose is ragdoll. Grab your elbows. Close your eyes. And you have an option if it feels good to swing from side to side here. And then come to stillness, release the hands. Inhale, press your hands into your shins. And exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, hold it here. Just come as low as your body feels is comfortable but challenging today. Feel that sense of activation from the base of the pelvis to the back of the throat. And as you exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, half where you lift. Exhale, hands down and step back. You're now once again in your plank, but this time you're going to bring the feet together. Press the right hand into the center of the mat, just the head of the right shoulder. Roll onto the outer edge of the feet and inhale to reach your side plank. So left hand reaches towards the front of the mat. So feeling that sense of opening through the left side and strengthening through the right side of your body. And then as you exhale, come back to your plank. 
Take a breath in here as you separate your feet. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. This one, locust. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, hands either side of the chest. Downward facing dog. So inhale, raise your right leg to the sky. I'm just going to turn around. Then exhale, step the right foot to the center of the mat and ground the left foot. Warrior two. So it does not need to be your deepest variation of warrior. Feel the connection with the floor. And then flip the left hand. Bring the left hand behind you. Reach the right hand up to the sky. Tuck the chin and bend the right elbow. If the hands meet, they meet. If not, the hands just grab either side of your top. Then with the back of the skull, as you exhale, press that head into that forearm. Inhale here. Then exhale. Nice, nice stretch for those triceps. Feeling that sense of strength and stability from the lower body. And then opening through the muscles in the upper body. And then inhale, release back to your warrior. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Nice. Inhale, warrior two. And exhale, right elbow onto left knee. Inhale, left hand to the sky. And then as you exhale, bring your left hand behind you and either hook it over your right um, thigh or just bring it to the back of your, lo your lower back. And then from here, without too much weight in this right hand, right arm, taking a twist as we take the gaze up to the sky into a half bound side angle. Breathing into the front of the chest and exhaling to let it go. Inhaling here and exhale, take the gaze to your right foot. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, windmill your hands and step the right foot back to the back of the mat. Then hold yourself in plank, bring your feet together. Drop your knees to the floor. This is a narrow legged child's pose. Bring your hands behind you and palms to face up. So different variation of our recovery pose. Breathing into the belly is harder here because it's compressed with our thighs. So that will encourage us to breathe into the rib cage, the small of the back. And then slowly reach your hands forward. Come all the way back into your high plank and then bring your feet together. So we're gonna do that same side plank variation on the other side as we inhale, reach our hands up and over. So we're creating a sense of stability and strength on one side and we're creating a sense of length on the other side. Taking one more breath here, inhale. Exhale, bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Separate the feet, inhale. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Locust, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a moment in your downward facing dog. Then inhale, raise the left leg to the sky. Exhale, left foot to the center of the mat, right foot grounds, warrior two. From here in your warrior two, just take a couple moments to set it up. Then flip the right hand, bend the right elbow and reach the right hand up your back. Lift the left hand to the sky, tuck your chin. If the hands meet, fine. If they don't meet, fine. Grab either some part of your shirt or your hands and then hold here. As you exhale, you're pressing the back of the skull into the forearm, creating a sense of length into those 
muscles in the arms, the triceps in particular. And then inhale, reach the arms wide. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, left elbow to the knee, right hand to the sky. Flip the right hand, bring it to your lower back or feed it into the left um, hip space. And then from there, without too much pressure on this left arm, as you exhale, pushing the floor away from you, creating some light through the body as you take the gaze to the sky, taking a breath in and a breath out. Nice. Continuing to breathe here, one more round of breath. And then on your next exhale, gaze to the left foot. Inhale, release, warrior two. Exhale, windmill the hands. And step back to downward facing dog. So from down dog now, we come into our first um, yin pose. And we're going to take the pose of pigeon. Inhale, raise the right leg to the sky, bend the right knee and open up that hip. Take an inhale here. Then as you exhale, derotate and bring that right knee behind the right wrist. And the right foot as close to the left wrist as it will go. And if this does not feel nice on your right knee, then you flip over on your back and take eye of the needle. Tuck under the back toes and move the back knee back as, well, as far as it feels comfortable. Just check in that that back leg is straight in alignment with the mat. And for the first variation, we're staying here on our hands. We've got not too much pressure on our hands. We're closing off our eyes and we're allowing the hips to feel heavy. And we're releasing the tension in the belly space. And we're softening into the pose. So as we enter this pigeon, we're going to be three minutes on each side. So if this already feels uncomfortable in your right knee, please come over onto your back and take eye of the needle. Notice in your body where you're feeling the tension and tightness and allow yourself the opportunity to use the out breath to let that go. So discomfort in the outer hip, into the back of the thigh, all of that stuff is fine. What we want to avoid is any pain into the knee. And because I'm not here with you, I can't really look at your body individually to give you the right adjustment for your body. It's way safer just to come over and lie on your back. When you're with a teacher in personal space, they can help you with that sense of finding the right pigeon without putting restrictions through your body. Tune into that breath. Let go of Mula Banda. Let go of Rudhyana Banda. Jaladhara Banda. And just allow the breath to flow in through the nose and out through the nose. So from here for the second part of this pose, you're going to bring your left and you're going to grab it around that left knee and bring your left elbow in line with the left knee and the right hand just beside you. And you're just going to gently push into the floor with your right hand. It's not hard, but just to twist a little bit. And that will increase that sensation through into this hip space. So again, this is yin, so we want to let all the tension in the muscles around here go. I know that your elbow is holding you up. 
In fact, I want to just bring mine a little further forward so that I work my muscles a little bit less and it can support me a little bit more. So just find that position in your body. And breathing into a lovely soft belly. And so it might feel nice right now to close off your eyes. And just watch the breath come and go. To take your mind's eye off of the tension that you're feeling through that right hip space, maybe into the left side. And just to bring that attention to breath. To allow the pose to do what the pose does. To allow us to encourage that repair to the muscles in the body. By stimulating this stretch to send blood flow and hydration to the tissues. And slowly take a moment to derotate. You're going to untuck your toe and walk your right, your left knee a little further forward so you can release that right leg behind you and slowly straighten out. And then just do whatever feels nice in that right side to release that tension. And when your body feels ready, feel the connection with the floor once again, lift the hips down, look. And then inhale, raise your left leg and exhale, open up that left hip. Take an inhalation breath here and then exhale, left side pigeon. So tuck under your toes and walk your back knee back until it feels like it's in the right place. Both knees are different, so identify one knee and how that feels in comparison to the other knee. And then release your back toes, just make sure your back leg's pretty much straight with the back. And we're just going to hold ourselves here up high. So we create a little bit more um, space in the front of the pelvis by doing this. Getting a little bit more back bend into the pose. So all that's working are the arms and the shoulders to hold the body. So underneath those armpits, all of those muscles can soften and let go. We're breathing into the body. And we're feeding that breath to where we're feeling the tension. We're using that breath to help us release the activation of muscles in that space. And notice if your knee is already starting to hurt, come onto your back. Ask your teacher next time you see your teacher if there are any better adjustments you can take for pigeon. But right now we're in an external rotation and flexion of the knee and I don't want to put any pressure on a knee. There's a whole lot of stuff going on within the knee. A whole lot of lifetime of trauma through the knees as well. Feel the muscles slowly taking their time to soften and let go. And 
And then from here, bringing that right hand now, I'm twisting away from you, but on the outside of the knee. And then the left hand beside you just to hold you to prop you up. And then just guide that left hand into the floor to guide into the twist. And you'll feel that tighten in the outer hip most, most likely. And then just find a real comfortable place for this right elbow. And then we work into the twist. So two variations of pigeon to work into releasing the connective tissue around the outer hips, across the front of the hips. And then a little bit into the lower back where we take this twist. Allowing the breath to follow its natural ebb and flow, but without force. Just following the breath. You might notice as you breathe in, the body gets a little tighter because it's stretching the body. And then as you breathe out, that's when we can use that breath to allow the body to soften. And then slowly from here, we walk our hands back to the center and tuck under the toes to walk ourselves back. Extend that left leg and just do whatever feels good. Nice. And then coming to lie on your back, just take your yoga mat and roll it up halfway. So it doesn't have to be a super tight roll. But it's just gonna roll up halfway and it's just gonna prop our hips up as we take our legs up to the sky. You can equally do this up a wall, um, but very often we don't have such a, a wall accessible to us. So you're just coming to bring the back of your pelvis onto this roll of mat, and then you're just moving it around so that it Hold your pelvis up. And this is our last pose. This is a lovely restorative pose. So the sensation will be much less than it is in pigeon. Just bring your hands onto your belly. And we'll travel from here to Shavasana. And just allowing the back of the skull, the back of the shoulders, and the pelvis to rest heavy. Releasing and maybe bringing your hands to the spaces, the front of the chest. Let that feel a little softer. And the ribs. Let them feel soft. And the belly. And just bring your attention to your feet, to your toes. Notice what you feel in the feet and the toes. You might feel a little light tingling or warm sensation running away from your toes down your legs. So we're encouraging the blood, the deoxygenated blood, the blood that's of not a great deal of use. We're encouraging it to quickly return back to the heart. You spend a lot of time on your feet all you key workers out there right now, if you do one pose at the end of your day to help you recover for tomorrow, 
This is that pose. If you spend a lot of your time running or cycling, all of the blood travels to the feet and it has a massive job to get back to the heart. So you're just encouraging it back to that space. You can do this. We're here just for a few couple of minutes or so, but you can do this for up to 10 or 15 minutes if it feels comfortable in your body. So you'll feel that the blood is working its way much more quickly back to the heart. So when you come to stand up, all the new fresh blood from the heart is pumped really quickly down to those toes. So from here, hug your knees in towards your chest and just take a moment here. Just feel the sensations now in the feet and the ankles, maybe the lower legs. And just take a moment to roll your blank, your mat away. Bring your feet to the floor, let the pelvis rest down into the earth. Turn your palms up to face the sky and extend the legs out in front of you, Shavasana. Allow the body to feel heavy. Allow the face, the chest, the belly, the thighs, the feet, the hands to feel soft. Before you bring any movement back into the body, just take a moment to notice how this feels right now. And observe the chatter of the mind and the content of that chatter, the nature of it, the speed of it. Maybe it's all slowed down a little. Maybe those things that were niggling you that were really of no importance or didn't serve you, maybe they've quietened. It's 
allow yourself to acknowledge that. And then start to bring movement to the fingers, the toes, reach your hands behind you, point your toes in front of your full body stretch. Before you find your comfortable way to come and find a seat, And when you find a seat, just take a moment, feel the breath, the prana as it travels in and around your body. Bring the palms together in that heart space. Thank you for taking time to join me for this yin yang practice today. Namaste.